So in this video, let's talk about different light stand options for your small home studio. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to my channel. So before anything else, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel and would want to learn more about off-camera flash photography or maybe just photography itself, then this channel is for you. So you might want to consider subscribing and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see more of my images or some of my images, you can always find me on Instagram it's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So welcome to my small home studio and if you guys who are not and for you guys who are not familiar with the channel this is my relatively small shooting area. You could see that the studio is quite bigger than where, where I shoot in but for purposes of showing what you can do in a small space I try to limit myself in this area right here and this area is about 2 meters wide and 3.5 meters deep. Now in today's video, I'm going to be answering a question that a lot of you have been actually sending me via DM or direct messages is that what light stand would I recommend for a small home studio? Now of course there are a lot of different options when it comes to different light stands and those are the things that we will be discussing today. Alright, so the first one. This, was, is what, this is what you call the background stand. So what's so special about this background stand? Basically it's low. In other words, this is a type of stand that you can put, let's say for example, if I have my background right here, I can put it there, I can put a light right there, and it will be hidden with your, behind your subject. That's why this one is perfect. Now this background stand can also of course extend up higher like this. So it's a good, it's a good starting point if you want to just have a small light stand in your studio. Plus you can remove this center column here and you could go even lower because you've got a built-in spigot right here. So this is what you call your background stand. Okay, so let me put it back. Okay, so this, is what, this particular light stand is a specialized light stand. You don't necessarily have to have it in your small home studio, but it's good to know that it is actually in existence and it's something that you could actually purchase if you want to have a dedicated light stand just for your background or for your background light. Next, if your, your problem is really space, then this is the light stand that I would normally use. This light stand is something that I bring with me every time I travel because number one, it folds really compact like this and it's carbon fiber so it's very very light so it's easy for me to just bring around especially if I'm just using my speed light. But I also use this in the studio if, I, if I'm just shooting with a very light light. So in other words, this thing can't really handle too much weight or the bigger modifiers, but it's good because if you notice, the footprint is really low or small and it's relatively high here. So you can see that it's about a good seven feet tall, which normally is good enough for your standard portraits. Now, another cool feature of this light stand, by the way, this is the Photix Padat Carbon 2. I'll put the link in the description below for all these light stands that I'm talking about. Well, not necessarily all the ones that I can find, but I'll try to help you guys out on where you could purchase this. The nice thing about this Padat Carbon 2 is that if you've got uneven surfaces, you could actually twist this one here and it will adjust so you could actually put it on let's say for example a staircase like this so you could still keep your light level so that's why i love really bringing this around whenever i am traveling okay so now let's go to your regular light stand so you have two options you've got something like this and something like this now this is this is a standard light stand that i believe most of you guys will have in your small home studio now what's the difference between the two well, this one, I got this one from an Ellen Chrome kit that I'm totally in love with because it's a lever type of release. So it's very easy for me to just bring it up. However, the downside of this one, it's relatively low. Again, it's only about, give or take, seven feet or almost eight feet. Now, the main feature of this particular light stand, why I love it so much, is both a positive and negative. First, it's a positive because it's so easy to put up, right? But the downside is when I release this, look, it's just gonna fall. 
because it is not air cushioned. So you just have to be careful if you're getting a light stand like this that you're aware that it's not air cushioned, that the moment you release it, it's just gonna fall. And it doesn't have uh, three quarters or one fourth uh, spigot on top, so you can't really screw in anything. But this one for me is not really too much of a, of a downside, but this one's a problem. But as you can see, it's very easy for me to bring it up. So I use this very often here in my small home studio. Now, this is your standard light stand, which is air cushion. This one's by Photix. As you can see, it just won't fall because it's air cushion. But to release it, you still have to release it the normal way. But there is one thing that I like about this particular light stand. So it's a knob type release. So as compared to this one, this one's really just a lot easier to lock in place compared to this one. However, again, when you release it, it doesn't really fall down because it's air cushion. One particular feature of this light stand that I really like is that you can remove the spigot on top. Now, what advantage does, does removing a spigot on top do? Well, you could put it here. Therefore, you could light, you could mount your light this way. You could um, put a clamp in this one so you could hold the background reflector. And if you guys are familiar with the channel, you could see that I always do that. Even when I use my continuous light, sometimes I have my spigot here so that I can um, adjust my light accordingly. So. These are your standard light stands, this one. This one, is, I think, goes up a bit higher than this other stand. This one goes up to about 10 feet. So a good light stand. However, you have to be very careful when you extend the light stands that high. To, you have to make sure to put a weight on the bottom of your light stand so that it does, doesn't topple over. And it's not really such a big light stand. Now, if you want a heavier light stand, this is what you call a boom stand. So you can see it's a lot bigger already. You could see the center column here is a lot fatter because it allows you to do this. Basically, you could release this part here and you can twist it, it becomes a boom. Now, what's the advantages of a boom? Well, if you want to shoot those beauty shots of clam beauty, clam shell, clam shaped beauty light, well, you could have your light here and it's gonna be off center, you could shoot right smack here in the middle in front of your subject. And of course, if you want to create some hair lights, a boom would also be good because it allows you to extend the light above your subject without having the light stand in frame. Now, the problem with this boom stands is that number one, they're quite expensive and they're rather big. So you can see that it's a bit cumbersome to work around here in the studio. So for me, the cream of the crop if there is just one light stand that you're gonna buy or one investment that you want for your small home studio, it's gotta be this. This is what they call the C stand. The C stand, if you notice, it's got such a small form factor that it doesn't occupy too much space. It's, uh, it's relatively small, you see here, you can move around easily. It's very sturdy. It's really a solid, solid light stand. The moment you put a, a sandbag here, it's not gonna go anywhere. Your light's not gonna topple over. Very high, obviously. And it's got a boom arm already built in. Now these boom arms are so easy to use and they're very sturdy. All you have to do is figure out that wherever you're twisting this area, this knob to, that's where the weight of the light should be. So. If you want it this way, it's not gonna go anywhere. Just lock in place, it's not gonna go anywhere. So you can mount your light here, you can mount the flag, you can mount everything. So if there is really just one light stand, if you guys ask me what one light stand would you recommend for both indoor and outdoor so long as you're not traveling, a C stand would be the best. Now, there are different types of C stands and for me, my choice is the one from Manfrotto. This is the Avenger series because it's an investment. It's supposed to last you a very, very long time. Okay, so these are basically the light stands that I use in my small home studio. Again, I've got a background stand, a background light stand, a small light stand for traveling and if I really just want to have a small footprint, I use this one. Then I've got two standard stands here, one cushioned and one air, co one air cushioned one and one normal one, which is a lever release, which I totally love. Then of course, you've got a boom stand and the cream of the crop, the C stand. 
Okay, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and while you're at it, click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to see, again, more of my images or the images that I've created, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.